Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and I am back with the next part of the Blender 2.8 Pro Tips course. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at adding textures and materials to your model. This is one of my favorite parts of the 3D process. What we're going to be doing in this video is taking a model that I have created off of some blueprints and we are going to be adding textures and then adding materials to that model. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Open up a new scene in Blender and then I'm going to hit A to select everything and then X to delete it all. Then I'm gonna go up to File and click Append. I am going to navigate to my desktop where I have this axe model. I am going to click on the file and uh, then I'm going to go to Object and I'm going to just select everything and append it. Now, if you hit the home key, that's going to center you in on your scene, and you can see we have this pretty cool axe model right here. Tab into edit mode, you can look at the geometry for yourself. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to just be showing you how to add the textures. I'm not going to be showing you how to make textures. That is a whole other tutorial in and of itself. So right now, if you need to get textures, you can either use the textures that are provided with this model, or you can go online and you can search for whatever textures you want. So anyways, next I'm going to set up our scene so that we can look at our model and just get an idea of what's going on. I'm going to go to the World tab and I'm going to change this to Environment Texture and I'm going to click Open. Now, on my desktop I have a folder with some HDRIs. I'm going to open one of these. I will provide whichever HDRI I use somewhere in the Iridesium Discord, so just join that and uh, you can get access to this. I'm going to choose Rendered, and uh, this is what I've got. This HDRI is going to light our axe, so there's no need to actually add in lights. We can just depend on the HDRI in the background. One thing I am going to do is go to the uh, context render settings and go under film and check transparent. That way we don't have to see the background, we can just look at the axe on a uh, blank checker background. I'm going to open up a new window by going up to the very top right hand corner and uh, hovering over the corner until I get this little plus. I'm going to drag that over center our view right here and I'm going to switch to the shader editor. So this is our shader editor. We now need to add a material. I'm going to add materials to the actual axe first. So I'm going to click on the handle and hit the H key to hide it and then click on the grip, hit the H key to hide that. So we can just focus on the axe. And I'm going to go new and it's going to give us this uh, basic material setup. Basically what we've got is a shader plugged into the material output. Um, if you go to your materials tab right here, you can see this is our principled shader. All these settings are exactly the same. So that's pretty nice. Maybe I'll name this. Then we're going to start editing this material and we're going to edit it in this shader editor right here using these nodes. So I'm going to go shift A and add in a texture and this is going to be an image texture. Drag that up there grab this color and plug that into the base color. You can see our axe turns black, that's because there's no data in this image texture. Click the open button and if we go back to my desktop and into textures I've got this axe folder and in here I should have the axe cull. So axe and then C-O-L, that is the color. Click on that, click open image and uh, you can see nothing has changed. That's because we need to unwrap our geometry. So right now we have the texture and we have the geometry but the computer does not know how to put the texture on the geometry. So let's unwrap this. The way I'm going to do that is hit 1 to go to the front view um, so that it's flat like this. Then I'm going to hit tab into edit mode, A to select everything and then U and we're going to go project from view. So now I can see a little bit of something. There's like some rust here and some there, but it doesn't really look quite right. It doesn't fit the axe. 
we need to look at our UVs. We need to look at our unwrapped data and uh, just make sure it looks okay. So to do that, we're gonna go to our shader editor window here and we're gonna switch this from a shader editor to a UV editor. So now if we get tab into edit mode, you can see your geometry right here. And you can kind of see the ax um, and this is not lining up with the ax. So we need to make sure that it does. Hit A to select everything. S to scale it up and I just want to get it in generally the right position. It doesn't really matter too much just as long as it looks okay. Tab back into object mode and we can see it looks a lot better. If we hit Alt H to unhide the handle and the grip, this rust is lining up nicely with the edge of the handle and uh, the blade is white and uh, sort of scratched just like it is here in the texture and it looks overall pretty nice. So I'm gonna hide the handle and grip again and then go back to the shader editor. Um, although it looks pretty cool, it doesn't quite uh, look as good as I was hoping. Um, I'm actually gonna switch out this HDRI and grab something more like this. Yeah, that's a little more epic in my opinion. Maybe we'll work with the back. The, the front of it's all green, so I'm gonna just switch to the back. I'm going to shift D to duplicate this texture and I want to add in another map. This is going to control the roughness of our geometry. Right now you can see the light is completely soft. We want it to be uh, kind of grungy and dirty. So I'm going to go and click open and I'm going to grab the axe roughness. Plug this into our roughness right here and you can see immediately that has changed the whole look of the axe. Now, the axe looks sort of plastic. We need to turn up this metallic value right here, and that looks a lot cooler. If you hit Shift-D on this again, there are a couple more maps. There is the specular map, which you can plug in right here to the uh, specular value. That's not gonna change a whole lot, but it does add a little extra touch, and so I'm going to leave it in. And then last but not least is the normal map. So go ahead and duplicate the texture again and add in the axe NRM. This is a bump map. So it's gonna add fake bump to the surface of our axe. I'm going to go shift A and go down to vector and add in a normal map node. Plug the color of our normal map into the color of this normal map node. Plug this normal into the normal of the principled shader right here. And you can see something is happening. We need to set this color space from sRGB to non-color. And uh, yeah, now you can see some bump. Now it's a little too strong. In fact, it's a lot too strong. So I'm gonna set this strength to 0.1. And that might still be too strong. You can see right here in the blade, it's reflecting and I think it's still too strong, so 0, 5. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so we need to work on the handle and the grip now. So Alt-H to unhide those. I am now going to select the handle. We're gonna work on that next and hit New Texture. So we're gonna do basically the same thing. Go Shift-A, Texture, and Image Texture. Plug this color value into the color here. Click Open, and I'm gonna open the handle color. Open that, you can see nothing has changed really, it's just uh, a different color. Go to the front view by hitting one. I'm gonna switch to look dev so we don't have that uh, weird lighting. Tab into edit mode, A to select everything. Switch to the UV image editor and hit U, project from view. Now that you've got that, I am going to scale this up here and try to get it to align uh, as best I can. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. Tab back into object mode and you can see the handle is looking a lot nicer. Again, the reflections are really soft. So let's go into the shader editor, duplicate this texture, open the handle roughness, plug this into the roughness right here, and that looks a lot nicer. Now I'm going to duplicate this one more time, open the handle normal, add in a vector and normal map node, plug the color here into the color on the normal map, 
and this into the normal right here. Select non-color data, and uh, that's looking pretty nice. Now, this is not a metallic material. This handles probably leather, so we don't need to turn up this value. We can leave that off. And uh, maybe you can turn the specular down a little if you want. Looking pretty good. So the last thing we need to add materials to is our grip. I'm not going to use any textures for this. I'm just going to add a shader. So new. And let's just change the base color down to be quite a bit darker. Something like that. Now, I said I wasn't going to add any textures, but if you want to add some roughness variation, maybe we should add a texture. We're going to go Shift A, Texture, and instead of choosing Image Texture, we're going to choose Noise. Plug this into the roughness here, and then go Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. Set that in between the roughness and the noise texture and uh, then start turning this up and you can see as you turn the contrast up in here that uh, we've got some variation in our roughness on this thing and that looks pretty cool maybe I'll turn it down I just want just a tad yep something like that maybe set this to be all the way black very cool. So our axe is now finished and it is looking really nice. If you switch to render view, you've got this sort of bizarre and epic lighting. If you want to rotate the axe, instead of actually grabbing the axe geometry and rotating it, you can grab this object right here. This is an empty. It's an object that will not render. It's just going to allow you to uh, do various things in the viewport. Right now I am using it to parent this all this stuff to the empty so that we can rotate the empty and our axe will follow so I'm gonna go R Y 9 0 so it's laying down eh, maybe I'll go R Y 180 so it's laying down the other way and then choose rendered and you can pick a cool angle something like that take a screenshot and share it with your friends so that's pretty cool we just textured this axe however what if you didn't have textures prepared what if you just had an object that you wanted to texture it's going to be the same exact process I'm gonna go file new general I'm gonna discard this because I've already got a version of it saved then I'm going to hit A to select everything and X to delete it shift a mesh sphere right click shade smooth and I'll go into the look dev view. I'm now going to add a new material here and then I'm going to choose image texture. This is the same thing as adding in a texture. I'm going to click open and then I'm going to go to my textures and I'm going to add in a dirt texture. I'm going to grab the albedo and we've got this. Now you can see it's already mapped onto the sphere. It wasn't mapped onto our axe. Well that's because the default objects in Blender come already UV unwrapped. So if I tab into edit mode, you can see it is in fact UV unwrapped. Um, but it's kind of stretched, so I'm going to hit A to select these UVs, S, and then X, because I only want to uh, unwrap it on the X axis, and then hit 2. So that's pretty nice, looking a lot better. Now I'm going to go to the shader editor, you can see that we have an image texture plugged in for us. Shift D to duplicate this. I'm going to open the normal. Go vector and normal map node. Plug this into the color and this into the normal here. Set this to non-color. And uh, then you can turn up the strength maybe a little bit. And you can see we have our nice mud texture on this sphere. That's pretty cool. If I switch to uh, rendered view, can't really see anything, but I can add in a light. Say sun lamp, turn up the strength. And we've got a nice mud ball. So if you add in a plane, scale it up, and then you go to your materials tab and you click on this icon, you can add in a material. And it's added in this mud texture for us. Let's say you scaled it way up, now it's a little too big. Well, if you want to make it smaller, just tab into edit mode, switch to the UV editor, hit A, and scale this up, and it will scale that texture down. Just like that. Now you have a whole lot of mud.
it's really simple, really easy to add in textures, and uh, it's also very, very powerful. The things that you can do in the shader editor with all these nodes is absolutely incredible, and I really can't wait to get you more tutorials on the shader editor. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the shader editor and how to add textures to all of your models. It really is one of my favorite processes, and I hope you enjoy it as well. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.